Uh, today we are greeted by no, no, I'm gonna get straight into it. No, 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 a good friend of mine, former second ranked competitive eater in the world, Bob Shout. It's good to finally have you on the show, man. How's Thanks it going? Bob actually comes from the scene of the golden age of major league eating, right? When competitive eating first kind of like became huge. Like I personally was locked out of many contests. I did a contest to get there and it was Sonia Thomas's birthday the next day. Sonia Thomas was like the, the top eater out there. It was a, a total setup for her, but I knew I was gonna win the contest. And I won the contest easily. Boom, last year the contest. Like what was the worst repercussions then from eating like large quantities and like, like health wise or like how you felt afterwards? Like what's the worst you've had? I'm um, pretty much every Nathan's contest. Couldn't stand that contest. It was the worst <laughs> contest on earth. I'm Adam. And I'm Josh. Uh, welcome back to the Breaking Beard Podcast. Yeah. You do some like crowd music and whatnot. Crowd music. Yeah, we'll do We've got a crowd? Yeah. Well, Bradley, give us a clap or something. <laughs> Pretty go. good. Yeah, we don't even need like the additional sound effects. Uh, today, we are greeted by, no, no, I'm going to get straight into it. No, 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 a good friend of mine, former second ranked competitive eater in the world. Um, give me a second. Uh, salmon chowder, skyline chili, roast beef sliders, crystal hamburgers, champion of the world, wing bowl champion of the world, and everything. Bob Shout, it's good to finally have you on the show, man. How's Thanks it going? For me. I swear I was listening to George Shea there. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will know that is. But um, yeah, uh, how's England treating you so far, man? I mean, it's great. I absolutely love being here. I have been following like England since I was a little kid. Uh, as a matter of fact, like um, I remember when I like graduated high school, you guys had a big event here. And I've been, I got, I bought the paper then to save it, and I brought it. Oh, I feel like this is a setup for a really big gag. I don't know. I, this was like when I graduated high school. I bought this paper. Uh, the, the queen was <laughs> was crowned. <laughs> yeah, she's dead now. <laughs> no way. She passed. She, yeah, Lizzie. She she passed. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she had a good life, so. The Evening Bulletin, Philadelphia, Tuesday, June 2nd, 1953. That can't be when you were. That, that, you was, definitely didn't graduate high school. That <laughs> yeah, was, was advanced. I skipped a year. <laughs> <laughs> Should we start how we, know, how we start every oh, podcast? Yeah, yeah, we have, we, let's get some structure to this. People get mad, though, because like we, we, it's so rare we have guests that people think it's rude that we sideline them for no, the no, comments. No, no, but, we've, brought, but like, we've integrated, we've listened to the audience. Oh, right, okay. So like, we've, we've integrated these into it. So, George, do the YouTube comments, mate. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. You getting the jingle, Bob? Yeah. You get it packed in? It's good, right? It's good okay, stuff. so first comment from The Fish Dog. Beard needs to go and stay with Bob in the USA and train for a championship like Karate Kid. But, like, can it be not eating? Because I feel like I've got no chance of winning eating at, like, a, a anything. But I would, like, I don't think Bob's wife would appreciate that. But I have actually been at Bob's house, uh, or should I say palace, um, <laughs> in, uh, in, in uh, the outskirts of Philly, right? The, that's the summer state, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we were mostly in the west wing of the house. Yeah. <laughs> we had a couple of beers, right? So, I, like, chewing the fat in the garden. I really appreciate it. that. Was a good time, man. Good little video series I did there as well. I bet you were living the dream out there, weren't you? Like all that. I, I imagine I can I can see the vision now. Nice big house, lots of land, not many people around. Is that that's like your dream, isn't it? Well, like Bob's he's in the neighborhood. In, I don't want to give away where he lives, right. right? But he's in the neighborhood. But like you've got I don't know maybe forty yards either side of a house, as yeah. opposed to like in England where if you're in a neighborhood, a detached house is about three inches from the next detached house. Um, they don't even use the words like semi-detached out there because yeah. everything is deta yeah. uh, you know. Deta but anyway, it's a very nice house. Probably cost him about two hundred grand or something. <laughs> it costs you about four million quid here. But uh, yeah, it's a nice house though. Uh, I wish it was two hundred. Yeah, more. <laughs> that yeah, that seriously, the house is probably six fifty-seven. Did you buy it for that though? Because you are pretty old. Uh, no, to be honest with you, to be honest, it was two twelve. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, you were buying it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Next comment, Judge. Next comment from Pokey Bit. Love Notorious Bob. He's so funny and humble. Can't wait for him to come on the podcast. Interesting they use the word humble there. Because that, that was it, formerly it your uh, your uh, nickname, right? We'll get into that, that in a second. True. We'll get into the origin right, story, yeah, yeah. but that's interesting. Uh, next comment. This was a good one, lads, and I agree. I think Notorious Bob would make a fantastic guest. Such a nice guy with a great quirky sense of humour. Did we actually mention that Bob was coming on? I don't remember him doing that. So I, I was digging out these comments and it was over a year ago we were talking about Bob on the podcast. <laughs> and we put Bob into like and a then we mentioned, And then we mentioned recently that we were, uh, <laughs> we were going to try and get him on. 
And obviously, like, Bob and I shared uh, DMs back and forth because he said he was going to make the trip over, you know, just help mm. bump the channel on a, li- a little bit further. Yeah, yeah, give me a few subs. Push you over the line <laughs> to get you that 4 million subscribers. So it's nice of him to, like, honour his word. Like, yeah, what, yeah, a, yeah. what a man. Yeah. <laughs> Is that it? Uh, and there's some comments from uh, the recent videos that you've done together. Um Mountain Hobbler says, this is when the sensei takes in the homeless orphan off the streets and trains him how to be a master eater. <laughs> it's a bit like, you know, a kickboxer, you know, <laughs> takes in Jean-Claude Van Damme, the, the goofy idiot who like thinks he can fight and whatnot, but can't really, <laughs> just dances drunk in a local club and he teaches him how to, it's a bit like that, yeah. But uh, we, how many videos have we done together? I reckon like five. Uh, probably five or six. I Honestly, five, five or six, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, some of my, my best videos. Just because I, I enjoy having what you guys call banner, but just, yeah. I don't know. I, you, when I first met you, I, do you want me to go down this path or not? Yeah, yeah, go we for went, it. Yeah, we, yeah. Do we have another yeah, comment yeah. first, though? It's fine. We'll, yeah. We'll, yeah, we can. yeah, yeah, let's go down this path, Bob. Yeah. Well, no, when I first met you, um, you, you oh, were starting. just fat. Bob's here, man. You can't <laughs> fat. But listen, man. <laughs> Bob and I have heard it, uh, each other doing some weird stuff, man. So like, we don't, need, don't even worry about that. Go on, Bob. That's sorry. True. Um, you were competing for Team England on a TV show and I was team USA and there's four people. I didn't recognize three of them and I recognized beard. I had no idea who he was. Like, honestly, no clue. I'm like, that's the guy that tried to eat a bunch of big Macs. I, I, I saw that video, but I didn't, I didn't follow you because I didn't really follow any eaters on YouTube. And, um, and ever since then, so I went up to him and the like, said hi and we kind of hit it off. Some of the people on, on your team were more reserved. <laughs> And I was the only fun one from the English team, yeah, that's well, true. Well, I mean, they, and some, you know, were more, you know, outgoing. But I'm not going to name They know who they are. I guess. <laughs> Hold on, where did you land on this? I was the, I, I was the good one, right, Bob? I was very approachable. Well, I made so, friends with I was out drinking and stuff like that. This must have been fucking years ago. Man. Oh, yeah, it was a long time ago. So there, there was four of them, and I'm yeah. not saying any of them were, were outgoing. Okay. I'm saying some were more outgoing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we, team I, went, Australia, I went to karaoke. I went to karaoke. You did. <laughs> yeah. Like team Australia, Team USA, Team Japan. We were all going out. Yeah. And four people from Team England, all the whole team was sitting on the sofa in the lobby, <laughs> just literally sitting there. I was just waiting for the invitation though, because yeah. I did. And you know what I heard that night? Probably one of the worst things I've ever heard in my life. Bob was doing a karaoke version of. Uh, Halo, I don't know who does that song, you know, baby, I can see a halo. Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was just I Bob, like, know. drunk off his ass, just screaming the words halo. Like, and I mean, like, literally, like, a guttural scream, like something from a horror movie. Well, we had a professional singer from Japan in the group. And, Is that Anne? Uh, uh, um, Moeno. Moeno, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm out there, I can't karaoke, but I'm trying to get... Like an actual singer out there doing something, and, yeah. and everybody just sat there like, "What is going on?" <laughs> just listen to Bob take over the show. Yeah, we got any more? There was, there was one more comment. comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one more comment. I love the banter between you two. I must admit, I look forward to seeing the two of you again when Bid makes another trip here. Yeah, man. It's nice, isn't it? Oh, nice to hear about. Like, it's very rare that people come on my channel and other people actually enjoy it. For example, Josh came on my channel and tried to eat some stuff, and <laughs> everyone hated it. So, like, the fact that you're on the channel and people don't mind it is admittedly a great though, like uh, Bob's in the industry. Like, I shouldn't, I should have never have been there, you know. Yeah, but like, think of it more like people didn't really like it when Tom Aspinall came on. <laughs> admittedly, he's not an eater. People didn't really like it when James Smith came on. People didn't even really like it when Randy came on. Tell you the truth, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> It's really an honor is what I'm saying. I'm trying to pick it. It's, it's, it's a long-winded rare. compliment. But. It's, it's very rare. Even on my channel, um, you could be good friends with someone and get along great with them, but your fans want to see a certain thing and yeah. because it's a different interaction. Yeah, yeah. You look to the side versus look to the camera, and then the hate that comes out from people. I, I don't know what they have in their life, but I told, you I, just I, get hatred of... I totally understand why people don't like the change in pace. I do get that. Because, like, you're there for that person. You enjoy that character that's there on that screen. So I totally understand why people do get upset by it. However, it takes then a special kind of person to offer that hatred in a comment and take the time to put it there. Like, how have you found it, obviously, like being on YouTube? Like, what's the process been like for you? So I've had kind of, like, two startups in this uh, journey. I didn't want to YouTube at first. I thought it was stupid. No sense. None of the top eaters did it. Yeah. And then what did that happen is it opened a door for these these people like a, a Matt Stoney or a Pete, Furious Pete. They were getting all the views because no one was doing it. Yeah. And we could destroy these people. I'm not talking about Matt when he being peak, 
but they were just doing like nothing stuff and getting views. And I didn't understand that they're getting paid. So I, I finally went into YouTube and that was my first um, kind of feet in the water and the hatred that came out it was just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and and you, you had to go through that. And then since the company approached me to do my Facebook videos, yeah. so they're going to edit for me and post, but that just opened up the world again. There's totally different people on Facebook <laughs> yeah. and they are way bolder than YouTube. Right. I, I did this one video recently and I was probably getting 50 hate comments a day and it's a three month old video. And this is just like you mother effing blah, 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 blah. <laughs> You can swear, but just like, don't do it but too much because you're, you're, you're the reason like everything is wrong on earth. Like, yeah, but it wasn't one person and no. it was just every day, just influx of. So I think it through <laughs> this whole new, like what I had to do on YouTube to find my audience, the people that mainly support you, a couple of hatred. To now, I'm like I'm I'm more to like 98 percent hatred, yeah, 2 percent fa- support. Facebook's a brutal a brutal platform. I mean, you've got like old people like my granddad. Like he shares, you know, lost dog pictures from Ecuador, thinking it's going to help. Like he'll comment on stupid shit, or, like thinking there's just all the anonymity. It's like it's a weird place. His face, yeah. Like I'm I'm the worst racist for eating sushi with a fork. Like that's racist. Supposedly, racist. supposedly like <laughs> oh, that's like, all that's what somebody said to you. No, I'm like really oh, right, okay, I I it with, like because I'm like, <laughs> I was cultural. gonna say George Clipper. <laughs> Bob says he is racist. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's like cultural appropriation. Like yeah. how do you insult a whole you know section of people in the world? Yeah. I'm like what? Like, <laughs> and the thing is, like I, I understand you're supposed to eat it with chopsticks or your hands. Yeah. But when I eat with hands, I fast forward my videos. It looks ridiculously fast. It just looks like I'm just yeah. doing that. So the fork is a little bit slower. <laughs> and the chopsticks. I know what you were thinking then. Reminded me of Sister Beard. <laughs> 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 yeah, Facebook is a weird place, man. The thing about Facebook is it's, the YouTube is like, you say it's, it's your, um, that's where people predominantly, Okay, your videos get suggested, but predominantly it's your audience coming back, right? Yeah. Whereas Facebook, it's a whole... Di- because Facebook are trying to aggressively get into the video space. They're showing your video to basically everyone, and everyone's going to have an opinion. Usually people over the age of, like, 40 that have nothing better to do and <laughs> have probably slightly more conservative values. But, uh, yes, yeah, I mean, who cares, right? The risk of summarising that too early. Um do we have actual talking points today? Well, I, f- I figured you'd be Was leading this charge. Taking... Yeah, Good, I do have talking I, I, points, but I'd yeah. rather you... Well, I plan to. Don't worry about yeah, it. I just yeah. didn't really write anything down. But I wanted to know. The most interesting part, like Bob talks about YouTube, obviously he's an accomplished YouTuber, but um, the most interesting part is that Bob actually comes from the scene of the golden age of Major League Eating, right? When competitive eating first kind of like became huge. Um, it's kind of tapered off now. Nobody really cares. But like actual like contests when there were loads of contests on TV and stuff. So I've heard the story before, but do you want to give us like an abridged version of like how you got into competitive eating in terms of like doing contests and stuff like that? Well, I, I saw Kobe on TV when he did 50. That's Kobe actually. Google him if you don't know who he is. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I was like, I could do that. Like a, I call it a frat guy mentality. So we have frats in college and they used to be you know, these tough jocks like. You know, I was never in a frat, but that, that mentality, you can just do anything because you're young and dumb. And I, could, I could do that. And then I went out and I was like, I finished like third against a bunch of pros and I did horrible. Like I did like... Just for clarity, 50 what? Like you said... You 50 out. hot dogs. All oh, right, okay. Right. So with, the, with 50 hot dogs with a bun. So you know I talk about Nathan's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, shorthand to eat to speak could be like 50. It's like yeah. 50 hot dogs and okay, buns. Okay, right, yeah. Yeah. And the record at the time was like 25 or 26. So he came in and did 50. That was the big sea change, wasn't it? Yeah. Because like the Nathan's contest has been around for, there's like an, a lot of it's myth, right? But the Nathan's oh, famous hot dog eating contest, which is the biggest eating contest on earth. You've got 35,000 people in the crowd, a couple million watching at home on the 4th of July. That contest has been around a long time. And for the longest time, it was like, if I, if I went back in time 25 years, I could win it, right? Because they would win it with 30, 28 kind right. of thing. And that but was then, in 12 minutes too. Yeah. And then the Kobe actually came along, right? It was this Japanese guy and... Um, he did 50, right? And everyone said 50 was impossible. And kind of from there on, it, things got r- gradually more ridiculous, right? right? So I, I saw him and I went to a contest. And I'm like, I'm going to dunk because that's what, that's what this guy did. And I, I got too scared to dunk because everybody was introduced as, which I didn't get it at the time, was like stick. The baked bean eating champion of the world, the French fry eating champion of the world. <laughs> I'm going up against all these, I think, world champions. And you realize that a lot of these titles are... Made up on the spot. <laughs> you, but Bob, you said that too early because I've got like here like world records. Uh, we'll get into the salmon chowder one because that's one that you're known for. 
stick around for that. But Skyline Chili ate 14 pounds of that. Roast beef sliders, 37 of those in, in like 10 minutes or something. Crystal hamburgers. So you like world champion at loads of these things. And like the records page, your records page on Wikipedia is very long. Mine is non-existent. I don't have that stub. But um, well, I, I yeah. Mean, so yeah, I, I started, I thought I was competing against those guys. I finished third, ate like 12 hot dogs, 12 minutes, which is horrible. Yeah, that's probably wasn't me. <laughs> and then what happened is then we started training and certain people came on the scene like Joey, uh, Chestnut, Pat Bertoletti. I, uh, to a little bit lesser extent, uh, like a Tim Janis, um, but Sonia Thomas. There was a group of people that could actually eat like decent eaters and you'd end up bumping into each other. So my proud records are the ones where I went to these contests and beat those people. Now there's you know some people out there that have titles and records, but you know they got flown out on a Wednesday to do this contest because the sponsor wanted you know Joe Blow to be in the contest, and like I personally was locked out of many contests. Yeah, like, like there's like there's a New York contest. I'm like, hey, I want to get in, and I knew it was a setup contest, like because one top eater was in it. It was all like JV eaters. Yeah, and that person already was booked on a TV show the next morning yeah. because they were going to be the, the champion for the sponsor who was then going to get on TV. Whoa. So that, that sponsor wanted that person on TV. So I'm like, I just, I really bulled my way into that contest. I knew I was going to get turned down. So then they flew me to another contest to make up for me not getting into that contest because I was going to win the contest. Yeah. Um, and that's happened a bunch of times. We, I did a contest, um, it was Rib Sandwich. We get there and it was Sonia Thomas's birthday the next day. Sonia Thomas was like the, the top eater out there. Yeah, she's like and the best, one of the best female eaters right of all time, right? She's yeah. kind of like folklore in, in, in eating because she, she had loads of like records and whatnot. And she was actually pretty good. It was a, a total setup for her, but some top eaters like a Tim Janis came. Um, I came and um, I, I knew I was going to win the contest. Like, I know you don't know this, but like if I, if I did what I had to do, I was going to win. And I remember going to the sponsor and I knew they were there to, just to kiss Sonia's, Sonia's butt. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they gave her a birthday gift. The whole thing was about yeah. Sonia. And she's like, oh, hi, Tim. And I'm like, no, I'm Bob. I'm the guy that's going to win the contest. <laughs> and it's S-H-O-U-D-T for the check. Because <laughs> they spell it, they put a C in my name all the time. And she, she just looks at me like, what? And I won the contest easily. Boom. Last year, the contest never happened again. So <laughs> a lot of my titles are last year, the contest wow. because I'm not the guy you want in the media. Yeah. yeah. Like it was, she was a hundred, 105 pound woman. And I ended up getting a lot of media because I would be standing next to her and like, look at her versus this big dude. Cause yeah. I probably ate when I started in the three sixties. So I was a really big guy. And, um, you know, when I would win, they're like, I don't want this guy. So I'm not saying it was rigged against me, but my big, big, big things are ones that you had to qualify for, and I beat like the Joey, the Pat, like if Tim or Sonia were there, they're the, my most prized wins because I know it's a legit win. Yeah, yeah. Like, you've been in contests, like did a few certain contests? Did Joey Jeff show up with Matt, and Nick, and Mickey, and like the whole gang doesn't show up at contests all the time. The best, the best ones are where they do, but it's it's very right. rare. But so if you had a title, I'm not saying you don't, you're not the champ, but if all the top people yeah. above you aren't there, it's, it's not as, when you're looking back at your resume, that's not like your big win. Yeah, your yeah. big win is when everybody shows up and you won. I think as well, but like back then, the thing I find interesting is because like, there's a very distinct difference when I turn up to like, you know, contests or whatnot, and it's, you know, for the social part of it, like the party afterwards or you're talking before, because there's a, you can tell like the, you know, like the real... The legitimate like contest people like Joey or you or Pat or whatever. There's kind of, I don't want to say like there's a negativity towards people that just do YouTube videos, right? But it's almost like you're not expected to be there, right? Because you guys back in the day, to win to win to be a professional eater, you had to win, right? Because you were eat, you were basically eating free lunch, right? You were trying to win cash money at contests, right? So it's I think it's less of a it's a totally different thing, but like to eat stuff on YouTube for entertainment, that's how you earn your money. It's not the same as imagine you got trained to try and win like $5,000 or whatever. I, I did a lot of training, a ton of training. So when I would go to a contest, I was trying to get the payoff from that training. And some people are there for the experience. Yeah. They're just going to do this contest. Other people are, are regional eaters. 
and they just do anything like in that state or the tri-state area. And then you go, you have your national eaters that are, I'm gonna, we generally call like a JV eater, like someone who's a decent eater, but they're not a threat to win when all the heavy hitters show yeah. up. Is that like me? And then, well, you know, I mean, there's different levels. What does then, JV stand for? Well, junior varsity. So we have in the high school. <laughs> and, like, we get into varsity, American slang now. Like your, your first team is your varsity. And then JV is like generally your younger people, people starting out. Yeah. They're like the JV. So like I know when I met you, I was so much more advanced than you. But <laughs> I've been doing it for so many more years. <sighs> I was you back in the day. I, I did 12 hot dogs in 12 minutes. You never did 12 hot dogs and 10. I've never been that bad, no. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, I can spot somebody and go, okay, they're, they have what it takes. To, if they train, they're going to get better. But you can also see people that we call it, like my dad was a track coach, heart, or there's a lot of sports. Like you can see they don't have the heart. When the going gets tough, you, you know they're going to shut down or they're going to find an excuse or they're going to say, I'm getting flavor fatigue. You know I mean? know what you're going to say. So that sounds like Tomaspinol. <laughs> like, don't you get something about me every time I come back no, from the day? No, no, it's, like, it's like there's, <laughs> yeah. they say, oh, I, the crowd was distracting me. Oh, they, my count, George was saying my count was off. You know what's it's crazy, right? Reason. It's like that this, especially being like British, it, that this even exists. So like, because the way that like you're describing that, it's like a, a fighter getting ready for a, like a fight camp to then go win the fight to win the purse. And that, that's exactly how you're describing it. You're training to get turned up to the event and win to win the purse because right. all of your work has led up right. to that point, right? Probably the so best like, example of that was like you doing, I don't want to cut you off, Josh, but like the, you know when you did the wing bowl, you did like a training series for that wing bowl years ago now. Yeah. I want to say it was like 2019 or 18. The one that you, it must have been the one that you won, right? But like that, because that was a huge, that was an independent contest, right? It wasn't major league eating. Right. But it, it was a huge payout, right? You got like a car or something? So it was big. So the thing is I was with major league eating when, and it's, I've had so many great experiences with them. It's incredible. So many great experiences. But I feel like I ran my course. When you um, win Nathan's, the biggest purse in Major League Eating, you win $10,000. That's for the winner of Nathan's. Right. But there's also a guy named Joey Chestnut you have to beat. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to beat him. But if, let's just say I beat him. I win $10,000. There was a local contest to me, which was an independent contest. So I couldn't be in Major League Eating and do this wing eating contest. Yeah. Because of the scenarios... I left Major League Eating to do this one wing contest and I won a brand new car two years in a row and then I won a third car the third year, but that was $50,000 overall purse just for that third year. And that was the largest confirmed purse that I've ever been able to track down in competitive eating. There's a rumor Kobayashi won more in a contest. There's no proof to that. This was a qualifying contest. You had to qualify to get into it. Everything was on the record. Everybody knows that the contest existed. So I won 50 grand, Whoa. one contest. I would have had to win Nathan's five consecutive yeah. years, which I would not win one of the years. Yeah. So for me, it was a huge payday that it made sense for me to leap outside of MLA. But to be honest with you, in my opinion, if you want to be a competitive eater, which is different than a YouTube eater, if you want to be a competitive eater, you have to be a major league eater at some point in your career, only because for some ridiculous reason, this hot dog contest is the biggest thing going. I don't agree with it because I don't think the qualification is anywhere near as good as something called the crystal hamburger contest. It was much tougher qualifiers. There was, there was only like 10 qualifiers versus Nathan's. There were, they used to be up to 20 yeah. qualifiers. So it was much easier to get to Nathan's. So if you won crystals or even qualified for the finals of crystals, because it wasn't, split men's and women's. So there was like 10 spots for everybody and you had to win and you were bumping up and qualifying against other top eaters. So that to me is the biggest thing. Now I've done, well, I didn't win that. I was finished second in that contest, but like you had to win a two minute qualifier and then win an eight minute qualifier to get in and get to the finals. So wow. it, you ha it was multiple rounds to get there. So is it, is it frowned upon in like the eating community? That like Adam gets a, a like a, a ticket to Nathan's. Hey, I get a pass though because like I'm, like, I actually I I'm signed with them though, right? Yeah, that, not in like it's not a dig, but my, if there's people that are come, like if people are into qualify to get there. Oh, I know what you mean. Like, is it yeah. is it then is there a lot of like, well, why why is he here? You know, like why is Adam here? And it, generally, yes, yeah. there, there's that hard feeling. Yeah, but anybody who's been around the game for long enough 
has seen it happen every year. Right. Okay. Yeah. And it wasn't even eaters. Like Adam, there's nothing against Adam, but he's at least an eater. Yeah. Like they had this guy, William Refrigerator Perry. He was a football player, but he was a very big character football yeah. player. He gets in, eats three hot dogs, and stops eating in the contest. That <laughs> ticked a lot of people off. At least go eat 10 and, and quit, not quit two minutes in the contest yeah, or whatever. Because yeah. that took up a space from someone 100%. trying to get in. But my point is, there are still 20 other seats that could have been earned, and there are still tons more seats that are getting earned, even with international exemptions for people at this year's contest than this crystal contest. And I know that was I was better at the crystals, but... Like to me, when you go to a picnic in the United States, kids eat hot dogs, the grown ups eat hamburgers. So to me, the hot hamburger contest was where it's at. That's like a, it's like a brand of, I didn't know this actually, back, but that Cristal was like a. It's a like brand a White of, Castle. It's, it's so like the, a small. Like, the oldest uh, fast food in the United States is White Castle. Yeah. From that Howard and Kumar go to White Castle. I don't know if you've seen that movie. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Then the second oldest fast food is Crystal. It's a very similar burger. Yeah. I went there one time. When I was in, uh, I can't remember where it was. Be down south. Yeah, it was. I think it was Georgia, maybe. Uh, but I was like underwhelmed by them. But uh, it looks like a cool contest, though. Can I just say, like, when you would, so you've done all these competitions. You're earning smaller purses, like maybe a couple of thousand, five thousand, ten thousand is the biggest in major league eating. But then you go and win fifty grand on the third. So like two cars plus then fifty grand. Like, how did it feel to win that? Okay, so you should, you should describe it, as well, Bob, like the whole like, wing ball. Like you would love it, like because it's, it's all in a stadium, right? Yeah. So, so it's wing ball is another. It's a fluky event. I'm a local person, so I was required to build my own float. That floats to enter. And when I say in. a float, float like I can ride in on. Oh yeah, like a like a parade. It's fucking right. huge, man. <laughs> like it's like a massive. Is it a football but stadium or baseball? It's, it's, it's inside a hockey rink. Right. And it takes place at six o'clock in the morning. It's sold out. It's full of drunk people. It's incredible. That's it's, insane. It's sold out, so it's like 18, 19,000 people at 6 o'clock in the morning. Shit. But I have to bring my float to the stadium <laughs> between like 12, midnight and 2 a.m. And then I have to somehow get back to the stadium by 5 to wait to compete because the show starts at 6. So if you're a local eater, you're hosed. Like, you're up. Yeah. Like you're not, there's no sleep. and you're, It's stressing getting the float. You need to get a, a trailer to get your float down. <laughs> Whatever. And the out-of-towners, they would give out-of-town, like, exemptions and allow these qu- people to qualify, like Pat Berletti from Chicago. Uh, they, uh, they fly him in, put him up in a hotel next to the stadium, build his float for him. So he just has to get go over there at 5 and walk in and not care about this float. Yeah. Where I was local, <laughs> I had to do all this stuff myself. So <laughs> there's two contests. There's a local contest and an overall contest. I got hurt in the overall contest because I was up stressing. And I trust me, you don't really sleep from two to five because if you oversleep, you miss the contest. Yeah. So I didn't really sleep even then. But the cool thing was there was also a local contest. And I was the best local. And that got me a car two years in a row. So I didn't have to beat Pat. Molly was in the contest. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And Joey Chestnut wasn't in the contest because he was MLE. Jeff wasn't in the contest. So any MLE eater wasn't in there. Yeah. So the field I was beating was not necessarily the talent, most talented field. So I won local, and then I finally won overall. Now, my overall is worth just as much as Joey Chestnut's overall when he, he won his. He was in what was called a virgin wing ball. Anybody that had ever competed in wing ball, ever, was not allowed in that wing ball. So he only went up against one other pro and against people that had never competed before. Yeah. Mine, I caught an incredible break. <laughs> if you had ever won wing bowl before, you couldn't compete. So that meant, like, I think Pat or Molly had won the year before. And they traded off back and forth the two previous years. They weren't allowed in. So I wasn't going up against any champ. But I was still going up against people that were, like, a bunch of top fives from over the past 10 years. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I'm not saying I, I beat everybody – that was the great wing eater in the world, but I was the best that day. The people that showed up. How many wings did you eat then? So the, there's, it's a very questionable scoring. Oh shit! But just say, say the official one because like everyone's okay. everyone gets yeah. the same. It so sounds high, but there's two there's two wing numbers. There's wings, what I'm gonna call addressed. So you, how many I've, I put up to my mouth and taken a bite off of? Yeah. Then they go into a plate. 
they look at the meat on the plate. They don't look at the bones. They look at the meat and say, that's about three wings worth of meat. <laughs> so they take a deduction. They'll, they'll hit a three on their chest. Yeah. And they'll, so it'll be 20 minus three. I got a 17 yeah. on that plate. So I went through over 500 wings, but I got credit for 409 wings. So they're still adoptable. <laughs> they're little, so right? They, but I mean, that's so, well, yeah, they get these eggs in the embryo, like in the, in the egg, these chickens, and they pull off their wings in the egg. That's how small these wings are, which they're the tiniest wings. You can't buy these wings anywhere. I don't know where they found I, these I wings. feel like this is a but setup. Like, I feel like this is like, a, is this like an insider joke for eating? No, no, like no, mechanics I'm you. like, get, go get me a glass hammer, if, get me some tartan <laughs> paint, go get me a, a bubble from my spirit level. If, You're telling me that the bones are taken no, no, out no, no, and no. fucking... But if you... <laughs> like, <laughs> it. You, look, he's laughing in the corner. <laughs> You, you, you can't find these wings okay. anywhere because nobody grows a chicken for the wing. They grow for the breast. Yeah. Right? And they want the breast to grow big enough to, <laughs> to, to, and then the wings are cut off and sold. So these are so tiny, but it's, it makes it easier for the volume of meat. But when my finger is trying to get the meat off the, the smallest wings you ever saw, is tough. Do I honestly think I actually ate 409 wings? I don't think so. Can you eat the bone if you're that small? So there was a story where Joey... I've told this story before. Joey had won, <laughs> Joey had won the year before. Yeah. He had set the all-time wing ball record. Before the contest, we were told Pat Bertoletti was going to win overall and I was going to win local. That's the story that came down. And we had that was when it was MLA involved. We had the MLA commissioner on stage. Um. Joey qualified, there was rounds. So the next year, he qualified 10th place out of 10, even though he destroyed the record the year before. Um, the commissioner says, you know, I want to see the numbers in the book. And the radio station running it just shut the book and said, wing bowl doesn't continue until you're off the stage. So he's like, what are you talking about? I'm the commissioner. I'm judging this. Like, we don't care. It's our radio show. Until you're physically off the stage, the show stops. We're just going to run ads. So the commissioner leaves the stage. They open their book, and they had Joey there. So Joey knew he was getting hosed. Um, then he proceeds to eat, like, three chick whole chicken wings per plate of 20. You're giving plates of 20. So every time he gets a plate of 20, he takes, like, three, just swallows them. <laughs> and then when he puts the plate forward, they're still looking for meat. They're not counting any bones. So they go, okay, there's only so much meat. Well, obviously, there's there's a whole three meats gone. So I end up, somehow, I don't even qualify for the final round. Um, Joey catches up to Pat because they couldn't deny, like, he was just eating, like, it would appear to be lightning fast because he was swallowing them whole. <laughs> so he wins. We're going across the street to this after party. And, I mean, I remember this clear as day. I'm walking next to him. He's like, Bob, man, I don't feel good at I was swallowing a wing. I was like, get that, or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm like, Joey, if you told me if I swallow one wing, you guarantee me I would win the wing bowl contest, I would really think about that. <laughs> like, whether I even wanted to do that. He goes, no, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, whatever, you did. He goes, I got to bring him up. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, it, something doesn't feel right. And I'm like, huh? And he just, look, as we're walking, Whole chicken wings come out of his mouth. <laughs> and they hit the ground. I'm like, they look just like what I just ate on stage. Like, that's the whole chicken wing. <laughs> like, there's no, there's no meat off that. He's and I'm like, like a, man, that dude, cat is a different I'm like, breed. what did you do that? And he wasn't throwing up. He just, he's like, he just felt something wrong. And he just, yeah, went, just, he just went like, boop. Yeah. And we just continued walking like nothing happened. And I'm like, well... I'm confused. Like, you can't really throw up chicken wings because you can't adjust the bone to want to go straight. Yeah, yeah. And Maybe. you also can't keep them in you. And he's just walking along like, yeah, let's just go to the party. <laughs> so <laughs> he, he processed chicken. Apparently, you, at least he doesn't die from eating chicken wings. We interrupt.
interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Sorry to interrupt this episode. I want to take a few seconds just to tell you about our Patreon. If you can support us on Patreon, we have got early access to every episode like this one and future guest episodes that are coming up. We've got some big names in the pipeline. You get exclusive behind the scenes clips from like when Adam's traveling around the world or we're just chatting shit in the studio. Each episode, we record a Patreon only section, which is a little bit less PG than the actual full episodes. You guys can interact with us and help us steer this sinking ship and tell us what you want to hear on this podcast. You can get all this for less than the price of a pint and it saves us from having to flog some ball shavers. So if you can, support us on Patreon. Back to the episode. That makes sense because Joey's just, I don't know if he's an alien, but there's definitely something not wrong right with that guy. There's something definitely not right with him, man. And that's not, I know you've made, like that, that guy, like he's the the one guy I know that without question treats eating like it is 100% of sport. Everyone else has well, like misgivings because, because about it. Because he trained, I trained, like I've been in that contest. I've not made it out of rounds and you'll have your judge in front of you. And like they'll clear seats and you move up a row as, as they narrow the field. Just like, hey, Bob, where are they sitting you? I'm like, I didn't qualify. He goes, what are you talking about? Like, I just scored. Like, I, like you have way more than – I put in a much bigger score than all those people on that board up there. Could you tell them that? Like, because when I tell them that – so all, the scoring is all – is so fuzzy. And well, I'll so give the, you one is, more example. Is this like a problem with the judging then? So, like, obviously you guys take it super serious. Then <laughs> judges, Politics. They're, they're, they're like pulling judges out. It's, it's like, it's, oh, yeah. there's a guy sat over there, like, having a beer. Do you fancy being a judge at this win contest, mate? Well, no. So they had the judges, and I think the judging is accurate. Okay. I think the adding – they uh, might they might have people that don't add as good as other maths, people. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, I, I'm not going to say that it's specific, but I'm going to say that the adding kind of gets fuzzy. Because <laughs> we, like, so I won. Who knew there was so much like this underground like world of competitive? I eating. won Wing Bowl 25. The last Wing Bowl was Wing Bowl 26. So I'm the defending champion, and I know people that were in the radio station at the for two meetings, the last two meetings before the show. And they said, Molly is going to do over 500 wings. And it wasn't like a prediction that, you know, we just really feel that. Now, mind you, when Kobe did it, like Joey won with 202. Kobe won with like 300 some. Yeah. I, I do 409. I think Molly's record was like 425 or so-ish, maybe 430. I'll give her 435. So to go up 65 wings in 30 minutes, that's two extra wings a minute, cleaned. And they just, they weren't, I want to say, it seemed like, the, I'll, legally, it seemed <laughs> like they weren't predicting she was going to do 500 wings. It seemed like they knew uh, she was going to do 500 So they, they had like a, that was the agenda that they wanted it to do. Now, I'm, I was in the contest. Who ate the most wings? Molly did. I'm, there, I'm not, there's no, I'm not saying anything about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying there's always a competition between leagues and this has been an old contest. I was 26 years. You know, they were with Emily and not. And I have a f- think. I think that Emily wants their wing numbers high to say they eat more than Wing Bowl. And Wing Bowl wanted their numbers high to say they eat more. Because I was in an Emily contest. Good luck finding the results of that contest anywhere. I know that like some of the Emily ones are wrong, man. No, I mean, it's you won't find even the results of this contest. Yeah. They, they were announced on stage. And squash never posted anywhere. I finished second with like, I think Pat ate like fourteen pounds, and I ate like twelve pounds. And this is like in ten minutes. It's just of meat, not of whole things. And you know, you're counting the bone. It's just no. It just doesn't happen. And they realized that the numbers were just, and the sponsor provided the numbers. They just like totally. I don't know where they got their numbers from, but the Shays knew that this. Can't be posted. This is mad. This. I want to go down this rabbit hole of. Early. Well, it's mad because like the, the English people with like, what the fuck are they? I've had to swear they're just sorry. Like, the, what is this? But like in America, it's like especially like back then, right? Like when the Crystal thing was on, like Wing Bowl, that that thing. What was the thing on TV? Glutton Bowl or something? Mm. There was like it was a really popular then, right? It was huge. They, they just didn't move with like this, you know social media because it would still be like really popular now because there's an appetite for it in America. So in America, people. It, they were like fans, but not really in the same that you would follow like football or yeah. like rugby or tennis or whatever. But there are people that love it, right? And the contests are huge. Like even poutine that I did was thou- a few thousand people. It's like a it's a big contest, yeah. and there are the ones that are big are a big deal. So ah, I get so the look at this the wing ball champion ring. I thought yeah. like a Super Bowl ring. Obviously, it's like a, so, a hybrid yeah, of it, right? I wear it for YouTube now, but this 
allegedly was valued at 7500 And so I had to pay tax on this because... Yeah, well, you'd be careful getting out of Wakefield with it, that one. It cost, <laughs> it cost me about 2500 to get this ring. Most people would just turn it down. That's how, that's, how much the dust, that's how much the dust caps cost on uh, Adam's new car. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about that. <laughs> I didn't get that car for free. I'll tell you that one. <laughs> um, but no, I was in the good age of competitive eating. I'm, I'm so fortunate because it went, we had a bump into each other and it got so big that sometimes there was three good contests the exact same day. And then like I was good friends and I'm still good friends with Pat and Joey, but like, where are you going? And I wouldn't, wasn't like I was ducking them, but like, well, I got a cheap flight to over here. So I'm going here. I don't care who shows up because it's a you know, way better deal. Cause I wasn't getting flown. Pat wasn't getting flown. Like almost nobody gets flown. There were some eaters that got flown a lot and they got some titles that way because they were like based out of New York and you know, they, they were connected to the Shays. They, you know, they're, they were the golden child, say. Shays are a bit like, uh, I'm not really into wrestling, but Shays are a bit like, uh, you know, the- Vince McMahon. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the, yeah. They're, they're like that, right? They're like the evil kind of overlook. I'm not saying they're evil. <laughs> but they kind of, there's like a bit of an evil, they're kind of involved. And what I mean is that they're kind of like characters, right? They're involved in a sense, but they also actually own it. I'm pretty sure that Vince McMahon's like going to jail us about the video. Is like, he? Yeah. I, I don't think they're criminals. <laughs> I don't give a fuck anyway. They didn't invite me back this year, so like, <laughs> fuck them. I don't know how they wouldn't fuck. invite you back. That doesn't make sense. It's because I didn't do that, that, that thing in England that they wanted me to do. Punks. But listen, they have, they have a business. They're trying to protect their business. I get it. So they don't want eaters going out there and questioning things. They really, they've told us so many times they didn't even care about the numbers. They didn't even want the numbers to be high. So they, they changed the contest, the hot dog contest from 12 minutes to 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, in my, my thinking is because Kobayashi just brought up s such a huge quantity of food. It was amazing the one year. He, he brought up basically a loaf of bread. Are you talking so, about him throwing up? Yeah. This is on oh, camera. Well, on camera, he threw up on camera. On camera during the contest. Oh. And Pat, is, there's a picture of Pat pointing to <laughs> pointing to it. And this is one of the greatest things I ever saw. So I'm like, I look over. Find me this picture, George. And, no, just... Good luck finding that picture because that is an awesome picture, but it's hard to find. The greatest thing I ever saw anyone do is Kobe take this like small loaf of bread and just, and, like, just get it all back in and down. And then the next year at the contest, <laughs> <laughs> it used to be the judge the judge could disqualify you. So the judges like Kobe just lost it. And, and it was decided like, well, that's Kobe. Ashi. <laughs> <laughs> if Joey or Kobe does that, that's legal. Yeah. I feel like so the rules are it's up now. It was then up from the judges to the shades to make the call and it should, and it should have some type of authority versus some celebrity judge, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, deciding what level, but that was so in insane. You got it. Like eating these hot dogs is so disgusting. I can't tell whether he's been sick or he's just trying to eat the bread that's been dipped in the water. Like there's this picture, but I, don't, I think that could be like. That's that, probably standing, man. That could that, be like, yeah, yeah, that could be a reaction shot. It, he's like holding it. <laughs> and it was a great catch, but even better, like, like eat. But it, so have you, Bob, have you, I've got to ask you, have you seen the one of uh, Dave Brunelli? They, somebody made it into a GIF on the internet. I don't know what contest it is, right? But you know Dave, right? Yeah. We both know Dave Brunelli, right? Bo like, he was a boxer, right? And he did some like, he, like independently. And I, we, I've, I've done a couple of contests with him, so he must have done loads, right? And there's this one contest where I, I don't know what he's eating, right? But <laughs> he yaks midway through the contest. He's like, <laughs> but he catches it. There's a really, oh, you need, we need to get this one because he catches it midair. Re swallows it, but the, some like guy that I don't know, like probably just an amateur or whatever, who's like fall down from him, the table ender, sees it and pukes because he's seen <laughs> Dave catch the thing and keep it. <laughs> Honest, I need to, if you've not seen that, I need to show it to you. Wayne sent it to me one time. I, I, no, I saw it. Dave, it. Dave's incredible, maybe because he was a pro boxer, <laughs> but when I won Wing Bowl, he was in second place. We had a two minute final round, I had a significant lead on him. And I wanted to get to 400 because if you're gonna if you're close, to, like it sounds better you ate 400 or something than 300. I'm like Dave, I feel good. Like I'm gonna get to 400. I'm just letting you know this because if he finished just finished without getting sick, he won a motorcycle. I'm like you do what you want to do. I know you want to try to win this, <laughs> but I'm telling you, I'm gonna win this. I already have a huge lead on you, and I feel good right now. Like, <laughs> like I, I know I have stuff left. And he tried to go after me. I was like, you're going to lose this freaking motorcycle, dude. 
And luckily he stopped because he's known for pushing himself to the absolute limit yeah, and then yeah. losing it. Because he, some eaters will just back off way too early. Yeah. There's that fine line where you need to push, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's me and Somali's one. <laughs> it's you every time you come back from Nathan's. You go to Nathan's. No, no, Nathan's, I try hard. I just can't. I'm just crap at it. All right. Okay. Like, I'll admit that. I'm just shit at that. But, like, it's, <laughs> some of them, like, I, like tamales or, like, ones where you, oysters was another one, you know, where you feel like you're going to throw up. Like, I'm not throwing up on, on stage, man. Like, I, I've never, I'd rather yeah. just not do well, I've, you know. I've done h- hundreds of contests. Never thrown up on stage. Never thrown up during, during an eating challenge. Um, I've definitely gotten sick after, especially anything with like, like I did that salmon chowder. If you do, if you do an immense amount of ice cream, um, yeah, we have to just eventually that lactose. Well, yeah, uh, eats that, at you. that was a question of mine. Like, what is the like the sort of worst repercussions you've had from your career in this? Like, you know, getting sick afterwards or like getting uh, ill. Or? Extreme sugar is the worst. Like shoe fly pie, which you probably don't even understand. It's a very, <laughs> it's very sugary. It sounds made pie. up. Let's say some shit from Harry Potter. Shoe fly <laughs> yeah, pie. It does, yeah. <laughs> I, but, but, but wait, before you mention this, we need to mention this real quick because uh, I didn't. I meant to mention it in the intro, right? But Bob just mentioned salmon chowder there, which is what, like, in the eating scene, he's most no- known for because that's the record for the most food ever eaten by a person in a contest, right? Most food. Well, now it's been. I think it's been passed in a longer contest. All oh, right, there was but, this a ten minute one. Or? So that was a six minute contest. Six. It's twenty three point four pounds, and that was using a soup spoon because I I had brought my own. Sp- You're allowed to bring your own spoon, so I brought a serving spoon. I, which was already okay by George and a couple of eaters complained. And so I had to go back to a regular, like a, real, a regular yeah. soup spoon. You would use. So it was just, and I wish I, I, I was told it was a five minute contest. So I didn't train for that contest because there's only so much you can eat in five minutes. Is, is salmon chowder like clam chowder? Is it like a, like a thick soup? A creamy, soup. Like so a creamy thick soup. The, the real story is <laughs> the movie was called the slam and salmon. Okay. They asked for an eating contest. So they're like, okay, we got to do salmon chowder. The restaurant couldn't make salmon chowder. So it was some other type of chowder. So I don't know what salmon chowder tastes like. I probably <laughs> had it But I have the record for eating the most salmon chowder. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a <laughs> seafood, it's seafood like, special chowder. I'm trying to like, yeah. for the British like, audience that might never have seen clam chowder. Clam like, chowder. Yeah, yeah. That like whitey so I, broth. I, if, you, if you're, like, you're like English and you've seen it, it, it's almost like a thick soup, right? Creamy like, fishy yeah, like, soup. Yeah. Yes. Creamy fishy soup. And in some contests, things go well. That contest was just a brutal for everyone. Because once you had all that in you, you're like, oh, good, we're done. Yeah, that sensation, like when you stop, you're like, okay, I'm done. I can breathe again. And, 24 know. pounds, right? Yeah, yeah, so this is like almost 24 pounds. <laughs> I would I would literally would die. That's like, what's that, 12 kilos? Yeah, I did, there, thereabouts. I did 16 at, at Putin, yeah. right? And I thought I was going to die after that, man. <laughs> like 23 and a, and a half pounds is insane, man. But I, I, if I were to train, that, that probably would have been at least 26. Jeez. At least, because I, I figured I could only fit so much in in five minutes, and then I was told it was six minutes. I'm like, ah, I would, I would have, I would have trained differently. <laughs> um, but yeah, everybody was brutal. I mean, Badlands just made it out of the cab. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I, I was had a tour of restrooms in New York City. <laughs> like every time you thought you were good, like. Where like I need to know where the next restaurant is. <laughs> you know what's quite funny? Like I've been done a, f- a couple of trips with Adam now. Like how disgusting it is after a, a food challenge, seeing what he's like. Because he turns up hungry. We get the video done afterwards. He's like, I can't do this anymore, boys. I need to retire. <laughs> Only if and then he'll spend one. twenty-five minutes shitting in, in the <laughs> toilets. And then we'll be set, we'll be heading back. He's like, all right, I'm good now, boys. He'll buy two liters of diet coke. N- down that, and he's like. Lads, I need to shit again because, like, it could, it, it could only, it's got to be pushed out for the rest of it to go down. He's, you know, he's saying that because, like, uh, there's a, with the second, I think the second video from Germany, I have to throw my, my underwear. Oh, he actually up, pooped, yeah, he pooped his pants. <laughs> I, yeah, I had an accident, a senior moment. You're probably uh, well aware of how it goes now, Bob, at your age. But I had to throw them out of the, cause the bathroom, like, went out onto the street. I had to throw them. <laughs> right, I couldn't, like, take my rhymes out with pooing them. So I had to throw them out the window. But then, obviously, because I'm a, a gent, I collected them on our way yeah, out. And it's only because the window was like the window that he threw him out of was at the entrance to the restaurant so we walked it out <laughs> and there's these shitty knickers on the floor he's like you're gonna leave it in the video i'm like no i'll get demonetized but we left it pixelated i think in the end card like, i don't know i can't remember but aside from um you know pooing your pants like what was the worst repercussions then from eating like large quantities and like like health wise or like how you felt afterwards like what's the worst you've had i'm um, pretty much every nathan's contest yeah it was just the absolute worst the worst of the worst 
because I wouldn't eat for days ahead of time, like would not eat. Um, so maybe I would do a yogurt. Uh, the contest was Saturday, Thursday morning, like right or when I woke up. Wow. And I had zero calories through the contest, which is generally you know noon, what, 1240 or whatever, on Saturday. And because my whole entire like digestive system had been cleaned out, like I did nothing in me, it was just able to just just get caught. And for three days, and this was year after year after year after year, three days I could just feel it slowly move, <laughs> like it going through my intestines. And then I knew on the third day that I would finally pass these, but it would just be brutal. And it's like, in my mind, if you see a cartoon or a movie where the witch is over the stove or the fire and she's got that pot going yeah, yeah. and you see that the stuff bubbling out, that's what my stomach felt like. Jeez. And it was nothing else. And it was, it has to do with the, the seasoning. Like if you eat a Nathan's hot dog, there's nothing wrong with it. You're going to eat it. It tastes great. But when you're dunking in cups and you, and you see the grease on all your dunk cups, <laughs> like you're, you're like, <sighs> Make me relive what's, it what's going on? And then like, the, it's like a garlicky, it's like heavy seasoning yeah. that when you eat volumes, just as brutal. Yeah, that's, um, it's, it was amazing to me the first year I went to Nathan's, how many people did not eat, right? And like how many people, like, I remember the last year I did it actually, they were all laughing at me on the bus because I was eating like, you know, candy on the bus because you need some for energy. I can't like, but I remember talking to Matt, you know, Stoney and I, I was talking to like uh, Juan and like a couple of the other guys and they're all like, I think I'd eaten like a salad that night and they're like, what the fuck are you doing, man? They're like, what, yeah. how are you eating? I'm like, you can't eat on a, on an empty stomach, man. Like you need, I need some, something for energy. And they're all like, well, like the last solid meal I ate was like four days ago. I'm like, are you guys fucking insane? And last, year there, the, last year there was a storm, right? Where you were just sat in that yeah. tent for four more Mate, hours. I, I had nearly, you know, I nearly, that's how you nearly left. Cause they, yeah. they, they let the women go, right? Um, and they were like, if the, the women are going, cause they'd done the contest, right? They were like, if you want to get back on the bus, we can't keep the buses. Well, these are like limos. <laughs> it's and I'm like, Titanic. <laughs> so he's like, if anyone wants to go, and they meant like the fa friends and family, you know, back to the hotel. And I'm like, Mikey, can I go? And he just looks at me. He's like, if any of you want to be losers, like beard over there, you can take the bus. And I'm like, look, man, yeah, I'm getting on that bus straight. If, unless you announce in the next five minutes that's happening. And looking at back after about three minutes, they're like, yeah, we're doing, we're doing the contest. But I was so like, and I'd eaten. I was looking at Jeff. Jeff looked like he was going to fucking pass out. I'm looking at him and he's just like. I, I would be, I would be, I would be desperate, honestly, because mentally you prepared all this. So I, I never tried to win that contest. I know this is going to sound like a cop out, but like I saw Kobe eat 50. I did like 12 the next year. Like, so I'm going to double my number and he still double me and he's going to be better. And Joey was always so much better. So I, I would try to present myself. Okay. But still like I, at 1240 when you usually eat like, I want. I would want to eat. Like, otherwise, then your mind just starts going. Like, man, I haven't eaten in freaking days. And that's why they get the, the like. I always. I thought it was mad as well. The first year I went, you know, the, it was at the bar because you came. Remember, it was like you and there was Kobuchi was there as well. Yeah. And they had pizzas. They had shitloads of pizzas that were ordered for. The, it was like a private party. Oh yeah. And I got there. And I said to Badlands, I'm like, Badlands, why the fuck are there pizzas? <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> Come on, beard. Um, we, we, you know, we, he says something like, you know, we, we eat, man. And I'm like. We just, ate, like, I ate fucking, whatever, I ate 30 hot dogs. Like, I, all right, I don't know what's going on with Joey, but like, most of us ate 30 or less, right? The most of the field ate 30 or less. And we don't want to eat, man. So, like, why are the pizzas? But, like, every, it's because, like, everyone's gone so long without food. It's a bit like, you know, like, bodybuilders. They're, like, they're still hungry after eating. Because you only eat for 10 minutes. Yeah. And you can't, the thing with hot dogs is because it's, like, a, it is a technique food, right? I can, I'm never full after hot dogs, right? So I get it, but, like. It, I thought it was mad, like the people that had done like, like 50 are still eating. And I'm like, <laughs> it, it took me a while of discipline because like you're saying, that, that doesn't count as eating in your mind. And then you want to eat. Yeah, yeah. And the times I did eat, it just added to this blockage, like this dam of food inside my stomach, which made it even worse because then I would have like say pizza on top or whatever. <laughs> so it took me years to figure out what to do. And then, you know, I would figure out how to make it the three days would never shorten, but not to be as horrible as they were. But so I never looked forward to that contest. I couldn't stand that contest. It was the worst <laughs> contest on earth. Because <laughs> they could once use that they, for advertisement. <laughs> only because once they got 
the men's and the women's contest, like I competed when it was one contest. Yeah. So we all got in and we all ate at the same time. Fair is fair, right? Now they broke it down to men's and women's. But for whatever reason, we have to, the men have to leave the hotel at the same time the women leave the hotel. Yeah. So whatever prep you're trying to do is now so far ahead when you would normally do your prep because you, you can't, you're not at the hotel anymore. So you just ride over the women and you just sit around and sit around and sit around. They get to go an hour before you do. So they, but their schedule is such, if you know how do you prepare for competitive eating, that they're on their schedule yeah, and they're ready to go. So it, the, the contest last year, I already would have been off my schedule because I have to go in early with the women and just sit around in an unair conditioned loading dock, <laughs> entertaining all the Nathan's employees, children. Cause they, the, the years I've gone, there was like, say 20 chairs, 25, 30 eaters, and half the 20 chairs are taken up by Nathan's employees' kids. So yeah. we couldn't even sit down. They, they, don't, they don't want to do that now. It's and eaters only. It yeah. was you just get your plastic chair. It would, we'd just be sweating. So I'd already be like off my game having to prepare so early. And then if you delay the contest for hours, I'd be like... I was all, already at home, man. I was on my prep, All my prep was, was wasted. So like you talk about preparation, like how, how have like others pre prepared for various challenges or like, like how the hell did you even get started in this game? And I then think the for me is like t t the, t the technique, right, is the, I think is the, that's the thing I always never did, like try to practice, right? But like that's, that's a big factor, right? Because a lot of people just think it's how much you can eat. Yeah, I, I never food practiced just because I was concerned with calories. There were some thin people that, that would try to prepare the food. But I never thought, was I going to go in a grilled cheese sandwich contest? Do I know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich? Of course. But I'm going to make it like they make it, which is probably going to be six, eight hours before the contest. <laughs> They're going to be wrapped, you uh -huh. know, and it's going to be totally unlike anything you train with. It's not going to be a warm, like, melted cheese. So I didn't train with food. You, do, you didn't do hot dogs. You never trained, like, with the... With uh, no, I would try to train hot dogs for technique. Yeah, yeah. Not for, like, a capacity. Yeah, yeah. Hot dogs is a technique. If you want to go down, like I'm not. <laughs> this a, is fucking nuts. I'm not a bad eater in any genre or field, but I'm a capacity eater. Yeah, because I have a. That's my strong suit. I'm not gonna say I'm the best capacity. But I'm, that's my strong suit. So, if I can just put food down. Yeah. So that's like a chili, a chowder, like a. Poutine grits. That's an easy one. Poutine. poutine something that I can just throw down and swallow without having to change the shape. Yeah. That's my strength. Having to change the shape is like a hot dog. You're not swallowing hot dogs or you're not swallowing buns. You have to change the shape of the hot dog. And you, you change it in the largest largest size you can swallow efficiently. Yeah. And, but you don't want to make it smaller and you don't want to make it larger because you don't want to do extra chewing. So that's a balancing that's exercise. A practice, that that's a technique you have to practice. Yeah. Uh, wings. You have to practice getting, getting the meat off the bone. Like yeah. How do you, how do, you do that? Do you, uh, Say, so I've been in a lobster contest, Joey's first contest. You have to get the meat out of a lobster. They did so, that in, um, in New Orleans. There's a uh, crayfish one or crawfish. I don't know. The, and you'd be able to take it out of the... So we, yeah, we, we had a crawfish contest. And Cra Crazy Legs is like, come on. I'm like, man, I don't know what the fuck this is. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do like one. I'm, I don't know how you get it out. It's like, show me how to get it out. I'm like, the fuck is that? Like, but I've seen you try and cut a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I just said that, man. He's like, yeah, but nobody's coming to this concert. Beard, you'll do all right. I'm like, look, man, like, I, don't need, I, don't need, I don't need to do it, man. I, w I was in a Crawfish in Atlantic City, and they weighed the trays. And some eaters realized that they weren't making headway, but there was liquid in the trays. So they picked up the trays and were drinking the liquid <laughs> to count the weight yeah, yeah. as eating crawfish. Right? So I remember my dad in the audience, I pick up my tray. I can't get a drop. There's mine are the mine must be the first ones thrown in at the top of the pile or something. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't open a crawfish. <laughs> There's no free weight of water. I finished like third or fourth in the contest. I don't think I ate one crawfish. <laughs> <laughs> Which is your favorite one, Bob? The eater, wait a second. The eater that won the contest was right next to another guy who ate like negative one pound of crawfish. And I'm like, well, right there, it's telling you something is wrong with the weights of these trays. Yeah, yeah. Something's not right. I won money, and this guy <laughs> ate negative food. <laughs> I don't which, know. Which is your favorite, Bob? Like apart apart from like the crystal one, and apart from apart Wing from Bowl, because like what it what, because of what it was. 
Like say for the like for the where the food is actually alright. Like I've done a few where the it's very rare. I hate to say it. It's very rare the food's good, right? Because like you say, it's cooked. It's usually if it's cooked, something cooked, it's gonna have been cooked ages before. And it's left out in the heat or whatever. But the one I thought was pretty cool was, uh, do you ever do strawberry shortcake? No, I refuse to. Oh, all right. I know I've patented that one. That well, I never would do that. Why? Sugar. No, it's Father's Day. Oh, right. Oh, so I have kids, out and I'm not going to drive four hours to be in a contest and give, oh, up, my give up my Father's Day. Fair copy. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's, that's the only one I thought was like pretty good. Yeah, that, to be fair, poutine was pretty good. That's poutine probably was did, good. Right? Um, there's a contest, I, it's called Chili Spaghetti or, or Skyline Chili. And uh, <laughs> uh, what I liked about that contest is there's different components in Skyline Chili. One of it's pasta, one of it's sauce and cheese. They weighed every plate. So it was like eight ounces of pasta. They're, so every plate had eight ounces of pasta. And they go back, add three ounces of chili, whatever, whatever the things were. So everybody got the same plate, which is, you would think it'd be common, uh. but it is so not common. And then everybody showed up to contest, and like the big one guy was Joey, um, but Pat was there and um, some other eaters, and I won that back to back. And that's like kind of a highlight for me because you beat Joey once; it's a fluke, you know. At the time, that would, you didn't really beat Joey like 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 now, um, but Joey really cared about every contest back then, so that was a big deal for me. And now he's he's more. I don't know. If, if I were him, like, if you won Nathan's 3,017 times, like, it's hard to stay focused for all these other contests. Like, it's mad to me that, like, he, it keeps doing it. Like, if I won that once, which I never would, I'd be a one and done, you know what I mean? Maybe I'd defend it and lose it. You know, a bit like Matt did, right? You win that once, I'm like out, you know? And maybe yeah. I could still keep competing, right? But I'd just try and win a different one. I guess it's the biggest one, but it's crazy. I mean, like, you know, I spoke to him at um, the after party last year, and he's like, he's already cooked by, like, I don't know. It's half past seven thirty, and he's drunk already, right? And he's like, "Beer, man." He's like, um, "I just don't get this YouTube thing, man." And I'm like, "Joey, like every every year I say to you, like, what the what the f are you doing, man? Like, stop trying to kill yourself by right. eating, right? And just make YouTube videos, right? You've earned it now. People are watching. You don't have much for person. No, I'm joking. Um, he's but like he could do well, right? And he's like, I don't know, man. Something seems so weird about sitting there, you know, talking to a camera. And I'm like, wait a second. You line up 70 hot dogs in your garden, which is overlooked by other people, and you have a guy come around to your house and, like, count your hot dogs publicly, <laughs> and talking to a camera is weird. And he's like, oh, yeah, you got a point, and then just, like, walks off, like, drinking a fucking beer. <laughs> I, I think he's just, like, a different breed, man. He's, he, like, he's different, but, um, yeah, I've been talking to him. Not that he told me anything. I have to imagine, though, from, from talking to him and projecting how I would do it, at some point, at some year, he has to be looking at an exit, like strategy. Like, what could I do to wrap my career up? I'm not saying it's this year. It could be five years from now, but some type of big play or something and go out on top. I think he wants to do 80. That's my, like, my suspicion. I don't know if it's it could possible. Be, that could be the thing. It could just be a pure number. Like, I would just want to do something that 60 years from now when I die, it's still going to be the record. You know, he could be doing that because I don't see anybody doing it. There's that guy, Jay, Jay Webby can eat. Yeah, um, yeah, but eating is way different. Like, like I told you, I've beaten Joey back to back years. I didn't come close to win hot dogs. Like, why do you think that is? Close. I'm like genuinely interested. Why do you think that? Like, I know be a listener. Guys, I didn't. Care, but. I didn't put in the well. But why do you think? Like, he because he, he even beats Jeff. Jeff's like, Jeff tanks like Joey everything. You beat. You can't beat him everything apart from right. hot dogs, and he, he's twenty behind at hot dogs. But he he had that mentality at first. Like he's just gonna do it. Like he he did like thirty some his first year at Nathan's. You 32, same as me. 32. I and then we did a contest like two weeks later and there's a bunch of us in the shuttle van and um, he's like, I'm going to do 50 next year. <laughs> and we're all like, first of all, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I had competed with him in a con some contest before he, you know, because that was right at the start of his career. And then he comes back and does 50. Like, he just has this thing like, there's, there's no reason I can't. If he can do it in practice, there's no reason I can't do it in a contest. And, I, and this is nothing against Jeff. It's not just Jeff. I don't think there's many other people that have that that mentality. Like the the, the kind of mentality where you there's would no swallow reason. like three whole chicken wings. Yeah, like there's no the some championship caliber uh, in it. There's yeah, always yeah. people. You always slow down in a contest for some reason. 
or allow yourself to get knocked out of the game. Somebody spilled your water. I mean, Joey's literally put people in headlocks <laughs> during the contest. You That's know what the mean? year he should have retired. Like, what? Yeah, like, Is there anything more boss to do than like, still out. win the contest after choking a dude out? Yeah. Yeah. But walking, he got so lucky last year, walking outside and the camera just happened to be on him. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, let's do this effing thing or whatever, whatever he said. <laughs> so that was pretty, like, feeds into it. But, like, I'm 57. I'm way older than everybody else in the game. And he's getting old from doing what he does. And at some point, I, I just got to feel there's an exit. Like, you, it could be 80. It, it could be, I don't know what, a big TV show or something. Like, like I don't know what it would be, but something, not, not that he does man versus who, but some something that, Transitions them out of having to. He's got. He's win. like Paul Newman. He's got his line of sauces, right? They sell those in Walmart. Am I right, Brandon? They sell like a Joey chestnut sauce. Yeah, ketchup. yeah? Ketchup, ketchup. That's that's the big exit strategy. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Could, like YouTube, you, like YouTube could be that for him, though, right? Like, I mean, obviously, you guys are both on on YouTube. You you know, you make make a living off YouTube. Yeah, well, but like, uh, probably we talked to Joey about it as much as I have. I I think he just. He well, seems I've talked to Joey within even since I've been in England. Not yeah. that we talk a lot, but um, like I'm really pushing. Like I never saw this Facebook money before, and I've got a little taste of Facebook money, and it's, it's nice. It's, <laughs> <laughs> Facebook money is nice money. So I I share like listen, like, you're bigger than I am. This is what I'm doing. I'm putting out one video a week, and it's not a special edit. And I showed him what I, I, what I got, and he's like, "Oh, okay, maybe, maybe there's something <laughs> out there." But he always does that. Like I, talk, I'm, I'm talking about YouTube, man. I'm like, he knows because he did that. Uh, he did the what are you like, 34 Big Macs or something? Yeah, crazy. I know because people always email me saying, "Oh, Yoko, you try and beat this." I'm like, are "You hi? I don't think I could do half of that now." But like that, I think that video did like four or five million views, maybe even more. And I'm like, Joe, you don't, you don't even need to do something that extreme, right? And you, no. you but like to him, something like that is probably you probably didn't feel that bad afterwards. That to, to Joey, that's not. But he like he's stuck in that whole numbers game. In my opinion, like if I want to put out a video, it's got to be a, a huge video. And I'm like, no, just go to a restaurant, do a challenge. Yeah. And you don't have to do it fast because you, everybody on earth knows you can eat fast and you can eat huge. Yeah. And I'm like, like post on YouTube, post on Facebook. And, you know, he's worried about like a lot of stuff that video, like people in that space, like I, I edit my videos and I do it very poorly. Like, <laughs> Like can I don't so say he, anything. he doesn't want to edit his videos, <laughs> so, which is fine. But then, then there's that cost of having someone to edit, yeah. like a good editor, not the person on Fiverr, you know. And like I think he's in that like he doesn't get it. Yeah. Like like whatever. It's gonna help. The star here, you've got light shining on you. Yeah, we find out the, the, the negatives of using we Windows. Don't know, we don't know we record this late, do we, right? Uh, how long have you going? I've been going over an hour, like an hour and 10 minutes. Like, there. I don't know, yell the gaffer, man. Do we have to like, wrap it up or something? Well, no, I wanted to just ask, like, your most, your most viewed video on YouTube is the the cheeseburgers. Yeah. And is that a McDonald's cheeseburgers one? Yeah, like 99 cent cheeseburgers. And you get the world record 67 or 68, well, I think it was. When I filmed it, it was a world record. All right, it's no longer the world record. <laughs> I got a call like a day, maybe the day later, uh, two days later, Jeff calls me. <laughs> and he's like, hey, you know, what, what's going on? I'm like, hey, what's up? And like, it's like, do you mind if I do it? And I go, go, like, go for it. Have I? Absolutely do it. Oh, did Jeff do it? I didn't know he did it. I said, could you give me two weeks? Like, I've never had a video with any traction whatsoever. I, I don't want, like, you beat it, like, film it. Just release it at least two weeks. From yeah. Now. And if you release it tomorrow, I don't really care. I mean, I, I care, but I, I view it as anybody can do anything at any time. Yeah. Nobody owes me anything. That was nice. Of him. Cool. Did he, so, did he wait? So he he waited and like he immediately broke my record. So what did he so do? So I had the record like, I, if I had to 866, which I don't really remember because records aren't that important. Like I, I don't think about my what I've done. Yeah. He did like say sixty eight. Okay, yeah. I did sixty four. He did sixty six. Whatever it was, he, he ended in the sixties, which was like two higher than me. Yeah, <laughs> Johnny, this has been funny about Joey. I got to tell you this real quick. You know when you did that, I saw him. I was at contest right, and uh, I don't know if he like knows that we're like pretty tight or whatever. And he's talking to me, and he's like, so, uh, "You see how the Bob Shout did the hamburger thing?" I was like, "Yeah, man." He was like, "I saw the video, right?" And he's like, "Yeah, but I know Bob Shout, man." 
There's no way. You might have just taken, like, they were all wrapped up. You might have taken the burgers out. I'm like, Joey, man, why do I just be so cynical? I was like, I know, Bob. <laughs> we, had <laughs> talked, we had talked, because we didn't understand YouTube. And I was like, it's so easy to fake this stuff. Like, we can do this. So no one would really question whether we did it. Yeah, yeah. Like, faked it. You know what I mean? And because I thought all that stuff was just fake. And so when I did it, I, I'd already talked to him, like, ways you could fake it. Because everybody goes. And so as soon as he did the Big Mac video, I know he told me he thought I faked the cheeseburger. Like, he was born. <laughs> you told me he said it. So as soon as he did the Big Mac, I'm like, oh, you faked the Big Mac. <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? I go, you had, you had a wide shot the entire time. One time, you do a close-up to your face. Right? <laughs> And then you go back to the wide shot. Well, that's there's an edit that you could have clearly left and done <laughs> you know, something. You used to make me laugh about that video, and it's, you did loads for a while. Where you had about <laughs> seven cameras on you. You were oh, in like yeah. your kitchen. You know, like a GoPro that way. Jeez, like just so nobody thinks I'm fake. This I'm like, Bobby, trying too hard now. <laughs> on that one there, he has like a GoPro up high. He has like <laughs> yeah. a wide camera at the front. The wide camera at the front switches off, so he's got his wood up high. But like even after thirty, like, I'm watching it going. He's going to do this. 30 cheeseburgers in. I took a screenshot. He's laid on. He's like this. Oh. He's laid, laid it was, over just hanging it out. It was rough. I fish. So I was, I had like a two, two channels into one. I was a chug guy because I could just chug. I could chug up there at the time. I was like a top chugger. And I had a food thing. And it's so much harder to eat food than to chug. Like I did the McDonald's. I walked by my wife and said, if this thing doesn't hit, that is the last food video <laughs> I'll ever film. Like, I'm just done. Yeah. I'm just chugs. Because I would be like, I would go to a, like my local nuclear power plant, and they're big cooling towers. Have you ever seen it? What it you yeah. Know? yeah. So I wouldn't be on their property, but it looks like I'm on their property. And I'd be like, like I would chug, and then I, I would have somebody dub a voice in, like, hey, what are you doing over there? You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like those type of videos. <laughs> yeah. But I would chug a gallon, which would be nothing for me, like of whatever, and then just go. And... I, that was a collab with Grabucci, and at the time, I was getting an email every sub I got because I would get, like, two subs a week. i get an email, like, twice a week. I'd be like, oh, my gosh, my life is so good. <laughs> I got two subs. I literally, I couldn't get through my emails because it was just thousands of straight messages of, you have a new subscriber. You oh, have yeah, a new yeah, subscriber. Yeah. So I immediately jumped, like, instantly, like, 15, 20,000 subs. Wow. Because Ricardo did it with me. And I don't know what was going on with Ricardo. I love Ricardo. Like he's a Brazilian guy, by the way. Right, like yeah. he comes, stays over my house. Like, he, I mean, he's literally invited to my my son's wedding coming up in July. Like, he's a friend of the family. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't even buy enough cheat like burgers to set the record. We're, yeah. we're both trying to set the record. I'm like, you have to at least pretend like you're trying to. Yeah, set the record. yeah. Like, you know what I mean, I bought eighty because I didn't know what I could do. Yeah. But I'm so bad with setting up seven thousand cameras. Yeah. It was like an hour and a half, two hours after I bought them yeah, you, before you, I started to eat yeah, them. Yeah, you gave the commentary like, I bought these at like 1201, it's now, you know, 345. I, <laughs> but that was the only cool thing I did in the video was when I ordered them online, yeah. like I like clicked yeah, up to yeah. 80 and then I added like a Mario Kart sound effect. I added some sound to it. And like, that's the only creative thing I've ever done <laughs> on the video. Aside from the, uh, the, the picture in picture I did with the pizza with you where I held the cardboard. Yeah. That I did a little frame. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm very uncreative, but that that's good. And that was the beginning of the video, so I think I helped catch on. So now I have no idea why it keeps going. People keep saying I have the record, which was I had it for days. Yeah, but I think somebody in Japan said they did it, and it was like you know when the women do it in Japan. I think this is somebody that said they did like eighty two or something crazy. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like there, there's eaters. I'm not going to name names. I'm not, I'm not going to throw anybody on the bus. But there's American eaters that claim they have the, like the Big Mac record, and there's like some dude in China who's just sitting there in a co contest. Eating more than anybody, and we're posting videos saying we had the record, and there's there's videos out there. This guy in China who did it, but I know for a fact Brazilian burgers are smaller than ones in the U.S. Yeah, I can't say if China's bigger or not. England, so it's really hard to. Is that, are we going to go film after this? <laughs> I'm down. You know, you know, Watch me do I'm eighteen sure. burgers. <laughs> Be like, I'm done. <laughs> 
Right. That's that's, like, that's big class. I think we, I've got I've got a bunch more questions from like the pa- we're gonna we'll do a Patreon section. Patreon I've got section. Patreon questions. But it's hard when you get guests on. Right? There's always stuff you just want to talk about. Yeah, like we could go on for like for hours. Uh, but honestly, man, it's been a pleasure finally to have you on on the show. Oh, well, thank you. Hopefully, like when you're back in the UK next, Can, come back. Should, should we save for the Patreon what we call uh, Beard? Yeah, yeah. I will save it for Patreon. All right, okay, yeah. yeah. Call me. I'm right yeah. here. Well, okay. I'll, I'll let the Patreon stand. We'll see. He's not old. He's not Patreon. Is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. Well, thanks for coming on, Bob. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Cheers, mate. Peace.